I came to Luma Pictures to find out how their visual effects work for the movie City of Ember unleashed a giant killer star-nosed mole onto the world. In real life, it's this like six-inch creature, and the director just envisioned it grew to nine feet. Inspired by nature and production artwork, Team Mole designed the creature, then engineered it from the inside out, creating a virtual skeletal and muscular system, then used computer animation and method acting to bring the zeros and ones to life. Now, even though this mole never sees the sun, you still have to light it. So Oliver, uh, tell me why we're up here on the roof. What are we getting ready to do here? Well, we're gonna um, talk about lighting and CG. This is Oliver. He has to light things that don't really exist. No wonder he's gone crazy and appears to be relying on magic. We're gonna take some reference uh, of this uh, mirror sphere ball to capture the real world lighting and then transfer it in a computer more easily. So I'm gonna have you hold this up for me. <laughs> this looks like a palantir. Yes. I feel like I should have a wizard costume on. You shall not pass! It's a very magical process. Well, this uh, magical ball will help us to capture the real world lighting and then reproduce it in the computer more easily. You're gonna take pictures of me with this ball and then put the, the photographs and everything into your computer and it kind of reads the lighting, whether it's bright or, or where the shade is coming from and all mm -hmm. that. And you can even adjust it afterwards. Sweet, all right, cool. So um, you just need me to strike a few poses here? Or? Yeah, well, I need to stand right there and hold it up really nice. Okay. A few photographs of the mirror ball will give Oliver the information he needs to light a shot of me and the superstar mole. So I started um, by cleaning up the so-called plate, which is you on the roof. This is the original photo that you took? Yes. Okay. And we're going to put the mole in there. Oliver uses a close-up on the mirror ball I was holding to create a lighting plan called a lat-long map. So you're, you're unwrapping this 3D sphere and you're unwrapping it almost like a globe on a, on a world map? Yes. Into it's an image like that? Exactly like, you know, at, at school, a word, yeah, one of those world maps. After the small sphere is unwrapped, he can digitally reproject it onto a larger sphere, like a big bubble that contains the roof, me, and Mr. Mole. So now the, the mole is, is surrounded by the picture almost. Yes. And then you can place the mole at any point within that environment, right? That's correct, yes. And we can even, you know, rotate around the around the mole since we have, you know, the sphere covers almost the entire environment, so the lighting is covered from almost every angle. The mole seems to be automatically lit as if it was up there on the roof with me. We can put the mega mole anywhere, shoot it from any angle, and the lighting will be perfect. So he is right next to you, sitting right there, staring at you, and holding <laughs> up the ball. Looking hungry. We really nailed the real world lighting. I mean, if I look at the, the brightness here and the way the light is falling on my leg, it's the exact same as along the back of the mole. Oliver, you are truly a lord of light. Thank you. Sure. Cheers. The creature is really coming together now, but holy Yoda, the mole is nude. Okay, Jared, so now we're really getting down into the details of the creature, the hair. Meet Jared and his amazing hairball. So this is what we start with right out of the box. So the, the software hair. kind of starts you with this? Yep, all the hair is just pointing up. The styling process starts with generic hair on a basic sphere. From there, Jared adds the parameters, making it malicious. And then you, what, you apply length, uh, coarseness, thickness. So there's different things like stiffness, which can make it so that it just sticks oh, out. Oh, yeah, direction. looks like a hairspray there. Yeah. Okay. Normally you start out with like a small amount just for speed. You just want to get the basic uh, length and the, how it flows down first. So to, the, to that we have this brush tool. Mm -hmm. And to do that you can control different things like the direction it's going. So you can say which direction, and then you see it. So you can flow. just brush, brush the hair right there, and get. Yep. Are you placing? But with this brush tool, you're placing the hair, the, where the hair is going to be on the creature. Yeah, we're brushing a guide hairs. So there's a few hairs that we're actually brushing here, and then between all those hairs, the computer will interpolate millions, hundreds of thousands, however many hairs we decide. Oh, to go with the guide hairs. Yep, exactly. Oh, okay, I see. Which keeps it able to run on the computer and not crash. Because uh, if you have millions of hairs on the computer moving, uh, the, the processing is, the yeah. speed isn't going to be able to keep up with exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. Once you've got the right hair, you take it out into the real world. 
What are you applying here? Just so this, gravity? This is just gravity. Yeah. Okay. That looks pretty creepy cool. Drag. That'll make it so that when we move this around, it kind of floats. It, yeah. do, it doesn't keep on going in the same direction. It loses its momentum very quickly. Jared transforms the mole's pelt from stuffed animal cute to real world nasty. Uh, you, you know what really sells it for me, the detail, is the way the hair goes in different directions. Some of it's more matted down, some of it's sticking up. You know, it really looks like it's messed up and that it's, it's been in a cramped space. From modeling, to rigging, to animation, to lighting, and hair, the Luma crew has built a super mole, bigger, stronger, and hairier. When it comes to making him a star and putting him into the movie, Justin is the master manipulator. So you're the uh, you're the you're the last stop here for our digital creatures. Yeah, that's me. What do you do? Um, it's called compositing. The 3D geometry is brought into a program to layer it all together and adjust it for final output for the film. So basically, compositing is taking several layers and putting them all together into one image to put on screen? Yeah. How long does it take, like, from beginning to end to composite all this stuff together? Uh, it really depends on how complex the shot is. This looks pretty complex. Yeah, this probably took a few weeks. For the mole shot, Justin had to deal with up to 150 layers of information. So here in the, in the plate, we have the actor against a green screen. Why is it that we use a green screen for where the creature comes up? Well, there's a very specific color that we can use to say that's what we want to replace. Nothing in the scene has that exact color, so we can say with this green, replace it and remove it uh, and put something else there. Once the background and the flying debris are in, it's time to add the mole. Many, many versions of the mole. So one of the first things that that's uh, included in our passes is the color pass. It's just simply the color values of the skin and his mouth and his teeth. Just color information. Just color information. The next thing I guess would be what makes this look, look like skin. Uh, this is called subsurface. It's like that look that you get when you put a flashlight behind your fingers and you can see the light coming through your fingers. Now this, you're adding fur on. Why do you go through all the trouble of the skin and the light and the colors of the skin and everything if you're just gonna put a bunch of fur on top of it? Sometimes you see through the fur. Mm. You know, in this case, the fur isn't completely opaque, so you, know, you have to have something there. There are different lighting and texture passes and Justin can fine tune as he goes. What if I decided that uh, I wanted to see his mouth tentacles look a little wetter? All right, so what I would do there is just brighten it up so that it looks a little bit more like a glossy reflection. Wet your lips, Mo. It's time for your close-up. Honestly, though, Justin, like I feel like I've seen this mole today from birth. <sighs> I don't know if I can let it go. That's sad. Thanks for the great work and thanks for showing us. Sure. Big bump, boom goes the dynamite. Later, brother. From concept to modeling to lighting to animating, the visual effects pros at Luna Pictures combine the real world with the virtual world by using their technical skills and artistic vision. <laughs>